Hi, I'm Mark from ACLS Certification Institute. And in today's video series, we're talking about arterial blood gases, how to look at and interpret an ABG. We're gonna look at the different components of the arterial blood gas and what do they mean. Then we're gonna review the steps for looking at and interpreting systematically an arterial blood gas. So let's start at the beginning. First, most important, pH. What is it? pH stands for parts of hydrogen or percentage of hydrogen. That's all it means. And it's the amount of hydrogen floating around in your body. If you have too much hydrogen, your pH will shift and you'll become acidotic. If you don't have enough hydrogen, the patient can become alkalotic. So we're talking about the acid base. The pH reflects the overall acid base balance of the patient. And the body wants to maintain this normal pH of 735 to 745. That's a normal pH range. That's where the body wants to be. 7.40, perfect. That's exactly where we want to be. Now, if the pH drops, the patient will become acidotic. They can develop acidosis. And the way I remember this is, years ago I was watching the original Batman movie with Michael Keaton, uh, Jack Nicholson, it was a great movie. And at one point in the movie, the Joker falls into this vat of acid. And I'm watching the movie, and it dawns on me, when the pH falls, it falls into acid. You can only fall into a vat of acid. You can't fall up into a vat of acid. So when the pH falls, they're becoming acidotic. That's how I remembered it. Do with that what you want, I don't know. But that's how I remember, pH falls, patient becomes acidotic. Now, normal pH range, 735 to 745. And we're looking for 7.40, that's right in the middle. Having said that, our goal in acid-base management is to correct the pH, fix that pH. The pH is the Mac Daddy. It is the big kahuna. We want to correct that pH. That's our goal in acid-base management. Next, PCO2. First of all, what is it? Well, for the purposes of interpreting ABGs, it's a respiratory acid. That's what it is. It's a respiratory acid. Now, before I start getting emails from all over the world from science geeks who I love and we need you, and they go, well, technically it's a gas and it mixes with water, forms carbonic acid. We get all that. And I understand the science behind it, but today we're talking about interpretation. And actually, if you understand the interpretation a little more, if any of those equations were giving you problems, this may help so you can figure those formulas out a little better. Normal PCO2 range is between 35 and 45. Now, if I start to accumulate more of this respiratory acid, and I start building up more of this respiratory acid in my body, and my PCO2 is climbing because I am increasing my amount of respiratory acid in the body, the patient may develop, yep, respiratory acidosis. That's it. They have a lot of a respiratory acid in their body. That's what the PCO2 is. So they'll develop a respiratory acidosis. Now, if the PCO2 is between 35 and 45, it's normal, it's balanced. The acid base in the PCO2 is balanced, it's fine. Should the PCO2 drop lower than normal, then we've shifted the acid base the other way and they can develop respiratory alkalosis. So when looking at a blood gas, first look at the component and ask yourself, what is that? What is the PCO2? Well, it's a respiratory acid. So if I have an accumulation or an elevated PCO2 or an elevated amount of this respiratory acid, I will develop respiratory acidosis. If it's normal, between 35 and 45, it's balanced. If it drops below that, it shifts the other way to alkalosis. First ask yourself, what is it? Next, bicarb. What is it? Bicarb is a metabolic base a metabolic base. It's an alkali, an antacid, the other side of acidity. Remember the acid base. You have acid, you have base. Bicarb is a metabolic base. So if I start to accumulate more of this metabolic base and my levels of this metabolic base start to increase, I will develop metabolic alkalosis because that's what it is. It's a metabolic base. Normal bicarb level is between 22 and 26. So if my bicarb is rising because I'm accumulating more of this metabolic base, 
my levels of this metabolic base are increasing and my bicarb numbers are going up, I have metabolic alkalosis because that's what it is. Next, let's look at the PO2. When you're looking at an ABG and you're assessing for acid base status, we look at the PO2. We really don't calculate that in, but we look at the PO2. And what's important to remember about the PO2 is that normal levels are between 85 and 100. However, the PO2 should be about five times the FiO2, or the percentage of oxygen you're administering the patient. So a normal PO2 of 85 to 100 on room air oxygen, which is 21%, 20, 40, 60, 80, 100, perfect, should be right around 100. However, if your patient's on a ventilator, and say they're on 100% FiO2, and you come back with a PO2 of 100, something ain't stirring in the Kool-Aid. Something's wrong. This patient is not oxygenating well. If he's at 100% oxygen, one, two, three, four, five, his PO2 should be right around 500. But it's only 100 on my ABG. They're not oxygenating. We need to find out why they're not oxygenating, and we need to correct that. So how do we read an ABG? What are the steps to reading and interpreting an arterial blood gas? First, start with the pH. Why? That's the MAC daddy. That represents the body's overall acid base status. Now we're just gonna start at 7.40, right in the middle. Right in the middle. That's where the body wants to be. That's our goal. We look at our pH, and in this case, it's 7.36. It still fits within the normal range between 7.35 and 7.45, but it's not 7.40. It's deviated from perfect. We don't want deviation from perfect. Which way is it deviating? Is it reflecting more acidosis or more alkalosis from that 7.40? Well, we have 7.36, so it's leaning more toward the acidic side. It's lower. The pH is lower than 7.4, so it's leaning toward acid. Our next step is to look at the PCO2 and the bicarb and see, do either of those reflect an acidosis? First, we look at our PCO2, 57. Well above the normal range of 35 to 45, so we found our culprit. We've accumulated this respiratory acid and we have respiratory acidosis. We see that, we have an elevated PCO2, which is a respiratory acid, so we found our acidosis. But now let's look at the bicarb. Bicarb is 31. Wow, normal range is 22 to 26. So the bicarb is elevated, which reflects a metabolic alkalosis, because that's what it is. Now we get into compensation. Remember I said before that our goal in acid-base management is to correct that pH. Well, in this case, the body's already doing that through the process of compensation. You have the metabolic and the respiratory. One will compensate for the other to try to bring that pH to the normal. So what we have here is a respiratory acidosis. We have a metabolic alkalosis that is compensating for that, and it has managed to bring the pH back into a normal range. We call that full compensation. The pH is normal, but there's a whole lot going on. We have a respiratory acidosis, the metabolic side is compensated with a metabolic alkalosis, and this compensation has brought our pH back into a normal range. We call that fully compensated. If the compensation did not bring the pH back into a normal range, well, we call that a partial compensation. Let's take a look at another blood gas. First, we look at the pH, 7.51. Starting from 7.40, which way is this leaning? Is it leaning more acidotic or alkalotic? Well, we can only fall into a vat of acid, and since it's going the other way, this is alkalosis. This pH represents alkalosis. Next step, look at the PCO2 and the bicarb and see if either of those reflect alkalosis. Start with the PCO2 first. PCO2 is 65, 65. That's an elevated respiratory acid. So I have a respiratory acidosis going on here. But my pH reflects alkalosis. So I haven't found it. I found some acidosis. I'm still looking for that alkalosis. Where is that at? I go to my bicarb. Bicarb is 50. Well above the 22 to 26 normal range. So I have a metabolic alkalosis. I found my culprit. There's the alkalosis. And 
I have a compensated respiratory acidosis. But it did not bring the pH back into a normal range, so we would call this partially compensated. So PCO2, it's a respiratory acid. How does the body regulate this amount of respiratory acid in the body? Well, the body takes in oxygen, uses the oxygen, and produces CO2 as a byproduct. It's the waste. And we're producing all this respiratory gas acid and we're ventilating it off. That's what ventilation means, to blow off that acid. When you're bagging a patient, you're going, I'm ventilating the guy. Yeah, you're putting oxygen into him, but it's him ventilating or exhaling, blowing off that CO2 that manages the level of PCO2 in the body, manages the amount of respiratory acid in the body. So, if the body's taking up this oxygen and I'm producing CO2, I have to breathe, ventilate, blow off at a certain rate, certain respiratory rate to maintain this normal level. If for whatever reason I start breathing less, your patient's respiratory rate drops, they will not be ventilating as much. They will not be blowing off enough of this CO2. So this CO2 is going to accumulate in their body and develop respiratory acidosis because they've accumulated a lot of this respiratory acid. That's usually the problem. Your patient's hypoventilated. Address the airway. Address their bagging. Do they need to be bagged? Do they need to be intubated? We need to get a hold of their ventilation so they can blow off this CO2. Now on the other side, you have a patient who's breathing way too fast. They're ventilating off all their CO2. They're blowing it off. So the level of this respiratory acid, CO2, is going to start to drop they'll develop respiratory alkalosis. They're breathing too fast. That's the problem. Now, you show up at the scene, you got a guy who's half with it, he's breathing 30 times a minute. You pull out your SOP and you go, holy smokes, this guy's breathing 30 times a minute. This is horrible. I gotta put him down, I gotta tube him. Somebody hit him with something, hand me a tube, I gotta get a hold of this airway. I gotta get his breathing under control. Do you? Or is that compensatory? Why is he breathing 30 times a minute? is his respiratory system compensating for a metabolic acidosis. And he's breathing fast to develop a respiratory alkalosis to compensate for it. You may not want to stop him breathing 30 times a minute. That's his body's natural response to blowing off that CO2. So this is a patient that you may not necessarily want to put down an intubate and start bagging 12 times a minute because his body's trying to blow off that extra acid. Make sense? So that's the simple down and dirty on ABG interpretation. I'm Mark for ACLS Certification Institute, and thank you for watching.